What's going on there YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video unboxing of the data doubler for uh, your MacBook. Now what this does, and it's kind of a weird deal, but it puts two hard drives inside your computer. So you use this little adapter that comes with it, and I'll start unboxing it now, but it takes place of your uh, disk drive. So you pull your CD drive out, uh, your burner, your reader, and if you don't ever use that, which most people don't, then it's not a big deal. I use mine a ton, so I'm going to buy a SATA to USB uh, enclosure for that drive, and then I can just throw it in that bay and continue to use it. But um, essentially what this does is this takes place of that SATA slot and that SATA space and makes your uh, MacBook a pretty sweet gig. Now I paid a bunch of dough for this. I got the optical bay mounting bracket which I think is like 70 bucks and then I got the um, Mercury Extreme 115 gigabyte SSD. So this is another I think it was like 275 in total or something like that. So this is their two and a half inch uh, SATA SSD drive, much faster than a hard drive. And so I'm excited to get this in. And then what I'm gonna do is take my existing 750 gigabyte 5400 RPM drive and stick that in the, I'm actually gonna stick that one. This is gonna be my boot up drive and then I'm actually gonna make the uh, SATA disc one uh, this bad boy right here. So we're gonna open this, and as you can see, this looks exactly like your optical bay will, and you just throw this in place. Uh, it's nice, that's really heavy plastic. And then uh, you have the SATA connection right there, and then you will be good to go. So this is uh, what we use here. Throw the two and a half inch drive in there, and we're gonna throw the internal one in this bracket, and then we're gonna stick this in the optical bay slot, uh, rather than you know, do this one. And then we'll get rid of our optical drive so that we can have a super fast SSD to boot, but then another 750 gigabytes inside. So uh, let's get to the installation and uh, let's do it. I apologize for that ever so crappy audio in the beginning of the video. I don't know what caused it to happen. My microphone simply did not sync with my camera, so it defaulted to the internal. If you're looking at this video for informational purposes, stop. This is not a good video to watch because I'm not going to explain well how to disassemble the computer. I'm just displaying this so I can entertain you while I talk for endless minutes and also... <laughs> but mostly because I want to show you the kind of process that it is. Uh, OWC.com, Ma excuse me, MaxSells.com or OtherWorldComputing.com has the proper tutorials for this. So... What I'm doing here is removing the optical drive. I use the optical drive quite often, so I'm actually going to buy an optical drive enclosure that goes from SATA to, I'm hoping I can find like a Firewire 800, but it probably doesn't matter because USB 2.0 is fine enough. You can only write to a disk so fast anyways. But that's aside the point. Essentially what I do here is I pull out the optical drive and then I swap the hard drive out as well. You don't have to swap the hard drive out. Uh, there's the optical drive, by the way. That's what it looks like when you pop a CD in. It's actually really light. I was thinking it'd be heavy. So that's one thing to note is the MacBook Pro I'm using right now after this little surgery is a little bit heavier and it's heavy enough that it's noticeable, but it's noticeably heavier, not a ton, but a little bit heavier than it is by stock. So that uh, data doubler itself is about the same weight as the optical drive and then you throw another hard drive in there and you get the weight on top of that. So it is a little bit heavier. I am moving the hard drive, uh, the irregular hard drive disk and the SATA hard drive. I'm swapping them out. You don't have to do this. I mean, you can still use whichever one to boot and they're both SATA going in the same motherboard. So it's not like uh, you, if you put one in one slot or the other, it's going to be faster. It really doesn't matter. I just decided I wanted this SSD in front and then I was going to throw the hard drive in the data doubler itself so I can stick it back closer to the fan, all that other good stuff. And uh, the weight is heavier in the back as well. So that's kind of what I was looking for, but it doesn't matter however you want to do it. So you screw the drive into the data doubler, you throw the data doubler in your computer and then you're good to go. When I turned my computer on, when I booted it up and it said, hello, welcome. This is, it actually booted up off of the standard hard drive disk because the data doubler was not formatted. So I formatted it in disk utility, uh, Mac OS journal, of course, extended. And uh, once I did that, I moved using super duper, I moved all of the files from my Macintosh hard drive, the physical hard drive to the SSD. And then I made that, the SSD, the boot drive. So on the SSD, all there is right now and all there will be are applications and 
you know, system settings, stuff like that. All my actual content like music and videos and all that other garbage, that's going to be on the actual external hard drive, or I guess it's not external. It's going to be on the Toshiba hard drive. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, we seal it up here. It's very good. As you can see, the installation wasn't that hard. It took me about eh, 45 minutes, but that's because I was filming everything. So had I not had that time, it probably would have been 25 minutes. So it's pretty fast and it's pretty easy too. I mean, you just have to follow directions and be somewhat cautious. Here's the boot times versus the uh, OWC SSD versus the original hard drive. As you can see, the original hard drive gets its Apple logo faster, but don't let that be alarming because the OW SSD will blow it out of the water in just a minute. So the other world's computing SSD is pretty much already done. It is done now. I even go to the liberty of launching Chrome, Mail, iTunes, and uh, Hibari, four applications. None of them are extremely CPU intensive, but it does take a minute to launch, especially with the hard drive. They launched, as you can see here, in less than a second. And on the external hard drive, why do I keep saying that? On the original hard drive, it would take probably about 15 seconds. So, uh, you know, it is substantially faster in every way, shape, and form. The original hard drive is just getting to the boot logo, and now we're finally on the desktop. Everything's good to go. But as you can see, it is a huge upgrade worthy of any iPhone user. I, MacBook user, fail. And as always, stay sanity.